Okay, hello, this is W1REX, Rex Harper, and I'm the designer and seller of the Two Scouts Night Sender Key. This is a kit that uh, allows you to practice your Morse code, learn it, and then use it uh, at nighttime on overnight camp outs and things of that nature where you can send Morse code at night with an ultra bright or super bright LED. Uh, it fits in a, a ubiquitous mint tin and this label here is something, this is a picture of me and my father in 1965. We're all dressed up in our finery getting ready for the Memorial Day Parade. Um, kit comes in a mint tin, has a little a uh, sticker that comes with it. I'm going to set it off to one side. Uh, open it up and show you what's inside. We've got a battery. I'll set that off to one side. Uh, a bag of parts. A circuit board. And the tin. So I'll set those all apart and then I'm going to tear, in, tear into this bag. Oh, very quickly, we have some electrical parts. We have a, another piece of circuit board. Uh, obviously these are electronic things. We've got an LED, a resistor, a sounder, a couple of 9 volt battery snaps, and this little socket thing. And then we've got nuts and bolts. So we're going to get to the nuts and bolts right off the bat. Um, I have, uh, just for the sake of organization, I've got all my tools in a little tray here to to uh, use in the kit and I've set them off to one side. <clears throat> one of the things I want to show you uh, is <clears throat> these are cutters. This is a side cutter right here and it cuts on the side but if you look at the blade, the cutting blade, it's, it's chiseled on both sides so that when you cut something off it leaves a bit of a stump on it. That's not very nice for electronics and circuit boards. We don't really use those. In fact, I had to, to search quite a, uh, quite a lot to find that because I don't keep them around my shop. This is a pair of flush cutters. And the difference is that it's hard to see, but one side right here is ground straight across and the cut is only on one direction. So when you cut something off, it's like cutting off a tree and leaving no stump. Uh, those are what we use when we're doing circuit boards. So <clears throat> that's the part, that's the pair of pliers that I'm going to use. So we're going to start doing the mechanical uh, key business and I'll start by using this little uh, number four brass screw. Put it in from the bottom. Put two small brass washers down, then add this little, this is called an acorn nut because it kind of looks like an acorn. Uh, that will be the contact for the key. Tighten that up by hand and then I'll use a small screwdriver. I'll hold it with my two fingers up here and just give it a little bit of a tighten. It doesn't have to be super tight. Then we'll go with the bigger number six screw, put that up to the bottom. If you look, we got three washers. I'm going to make sure there might be a slight size difference in holes. This one here looks like it's a little bit smaller. So we're going to go with the two bigger holes first um, because there's a little bit of a shoulder sticking up out of the board. So we want to make sure that if, the, if there's larger holes in the washers, we put those down first. Then the third one. Um, this is a called a knurled nut. Used to see those on one and a half volt dry cells all the time when I was a kid. So put that down. Doesn't make any difference which way it goes. And I'm going to get a screwdriver. Tighten that up. Put the key down on it. Put the nut on it. And I have a little nut driver to tighten that nut up. You could use a pair of needle nose pliers, but a nut driver is a much nicer job and it doesn't scrape up the board. Again, it doesn't have to be wicked tight as they say here in Maine. It just has to be relatively tight. So that is our Morse code key. And you can see 
down there, there's a, that's the contact that you're moving, and you don't have to move it very much. It's a very, very nice feel to the key. So that's the mechanical side of things. Now we've got to populate the electronics. And the first thing I'm going to go after is the 9-volt battery snaps. Um, here's a 9-volt battery that I leave laying around my shop because I use, build a lot of things using a 9-volt battery and snaps. This one, if you look, it's got a tombstone on it and a cross. And it says RIP on it. I have taken this dead battery. It went dead in something. I don't know what. I put a resistor across the terminals and I left it on for like a week to make sure there's absolutely no voltage left in this battery. So now I can just snap the snaps on. And I know that if they ha accidentally happen to touch, there's not going to be any any bad things happen to the battery because there's no voltage in there to do anything so I'm gonna so if you look there's the plus side of the battery and that's gonna go right here where it says plus and it's gonna go down like this but we have to take these little feet because there are no holes here we have to bend these tabs over uh, so that they will sit flat on the board and to do that using a small pair of needle nose uh, in the manual, builder's manual, I show exactly how to do this. I'm going to do it very quickly, but on the outside pad, they go, they bend outside. So I'm going to actually bend it this way. I'm just going to bend it 90 degrees. The front one bends out to the front, 90 degrees. The one that's on the inside we're going to bend it in. So this way I have to go sideways to bend it in. Like that. And so now when you put this down, it sets right on top of these pads, nice and level. And you notice it doesn't come out beyond that pad right there. The other one goes exactly the opposite. So this side now bends in. This one bends out. This one bends out again. Same thing. So when that goes down, they don't fight in that center space. So now I can, they seem to stand up okay. So now I can put them back on the battery. So I make sure that I've got the right spacing. Put them back down on the board. And what I'm going to do is push them way down on the on the very bottom edge, get them nice and centered, get the battery so it's nice inside the little inside the little box for it. And double check that I like everything. And then I'll bring my bat my iron in. <clears throat> this is a soldering station that has a conical tip on it, very fine. <clears throat> it might look clean but it's actually fairly dirty and what you want to do is clean it when you start soldering every four or five or even every other uh, solder joint you clean it so I'm gonna just take my little roll of solder I'm gonna add a little dollop on the end that helps the heat get from the iron onto the pad and I'm just gonna go and do one pad Okay, double check to make sure I like where it is. Then I'm going to go do the one on the other side. Uh, I'm going to look down underneath the battery to make sure those feet are down in front. Okay, looks good. So now I'll just finish doing the inside ones here. Now I'm going to add, this is like welding, only it's got a, a lower, lower temperature and a softer metal that you're melting. So I'm going to pour in the solder to make sure I got plenty of, <clears throat> plenty of mechanical connection there between the pad and the... Blow on a little bit to let it cool. Put my 
soldering iron back. I like to put my fingers on these and hold them when I'm changing the battery just to keep the stress off the tabs. I pull that off, get my iron out, clean the tip again, and put a little bit on the end, and then go in and do these front pads. The front feet. And get those two done. Okay, we're doing pretty good. We're clipping right along. The next thing to do is the piezo, which is the sounder. Uh, on this particular unit, there is a plus, and you can see the little circle with a plus in it, and the other side is minus, and you can see a plus on the board, so you have to make sure you're oriented. If you look, you can see one foot is, one foot is longer than the other, so I'm going to take my flush cutters, and I'm going to cut this off so they're about even, and I'm going to put my finger over it, so the piece that gets cut off doesn't go flying. And there it is right there. So I can go put that in the trash or... <laughs> the big thing is you don't want it to go flying into somebody else's eye or anything. So now I can take this and attach it or insert those pins right into that little... We call that a SIP socket for a single inline pins. So now that's a socket where I can, I can get my soldering iron underneath it and I can also take this in and out and experiment if I want. So in this case, I'm going to clean my iron. I'm going to add solder to these four pads, just a little bit, not much. Just so that there's some solder there. I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to solder these four leads. Just, just adding a little, well, this is called tinning, when you, when you put just a little bit of solder on something to get it ready to, to do the the real solder job. So in this case I'm going to double check and there's my plus over on this side. I'm going to hold it standing straight up. I'm going to get all the four pins lined up in the center of the pads and then I'm going to solder. I'm going to hit each one just a little bit. I'm doing this in sequence so I can set it, seat it down and then I look at it. It's fairly straight up in the air. I'm going to maybe bring it back just a little bit. Now I'm going to actually hit it with more solder, one at a time. And I'll do the other end. You don't want to give it too much, but you don't want to have it... You don't want to have too little. So there's the four, four connections made on that guy. Next, we're going to do this LED. And you see it says flat here. And if you look at an LED, you can see the base of it's round, but then there's a little flat side on it. And that flat lines up. It happens to be the one with a shorter lead on it. So it's going to go in like that, but it's going to stand up off the board. So I can take my pliers. There's a couple little um, bumps on that lead. I'm going to put my pliers right over that and then just bend it straight down, like so. I'm going to go back down about eh, a little bit 3 sixteenths of an inch, and then I'm going to bend them right back out again so it looks like a Z. Spread that out a little bit, just a little bit, and I can go and take a look at that. Where I want this end of the LED right to the edge of the board and standing up so I know that I can cut this lead off by maybe about a little over an eighth of an inch. I, I've got my finger on the end so when I cut it it doesn't go anywhere. I can just drop it down and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this guy and now I have a little handle so I can grab it. I'll do the same thing I did before. I will clean the soldering iron. I'll add solder to the two pads I'll add a little bit. I'm going to hold on to that with one finger. Well, I don't really have to. I'm just going to just, just add a little bit on the end. That helps it flow properly. So now I can go down in here. 
I'm going to try to put that LED right over the image that's on the board. And you'll see why that's important a little bit late. Whoops. I'm not getting the right angle here. Okay. I've only soldered that one side. Now I can carefully pull that guy over a little bit more. Solder the second lead. Waiting for it to cool. Pull it up. Now this is where, if I just cut that like that, this lead's going to go flying. So actually hang on to it. So now the LED, I'm going to raise it up just a little bit. And you can see that it's parallel to the board and it's raised up by about a quarter of an inch. Whoops. Sorry about that. I hit the camera with my hat. So we've got one part left in this little, this little guy right here. Bend it right at the body, bend it down. Again, taking the pliers and bend it at right angles, maybe a quarter of an inch down. Bend it back out again. I'm going to leave, I'm going to sort of bend one up so I can hold on to it. Again, I'm going to cut this off by about maybe an eighth of an inch. I'm holding on to it, put it away. Iron, clean it, little solder there. I'm going to tin that lead, and now I'm going to put it right, whoops, I forgot to tin the pads. Okay, now I'm going to put that down on that pad, heat it up again, wait for it to cool. I'm going to push this in, lead in a little bit more, solder the other side. I'm actually going to push that down with my fingernail. Okay. And I'm going to cut pull that up a little bit and cut that lead off and she's all built oh, I'm not going to do that that's the dead battery I'm going to get the new battery take it out of its wrapper well Plus goes to plus, minus, push it in. Oh, now it doesn't sound very loud, and that's because there's a little little piece of plastic that's glued on the over the hole. That's to keep stuff from falling in when you're soldering it. I'll take that off. That's uh, CQ. That's if I was going to be amateur radio talk for I want to talk to somebody anybody get back to me so there's one that's built now to, we have to put it in the tin but because we have these two screws on the bottom I like to have an insulator and so I'm going to I have a box this is a a box that resistors come in. I'm going to cut the lid off of it. You want an insulator that's not very thick, but just thick enough to be a good insulator. So I'm going to take and hold that thing down. Trace out the board. Piece of uh, index card, manila folder, Anything like that is, is thick enough to be a, a decent insulator. It doesn't have to be much. So I'm just going to put it down underneath the board, keep it from shorting out. So I'm 
Okay, so this will drop in the box like that. That goes in. You see the LED is looking out that hole. That LED will shine with a with a uh, battery that's uh, got a good charge on it. We've gone over a mile with that. So, and then of course we've got the little decal with the Morse code on it. So that uh, peels off, and we'll put that inside here. And we have one Morse key night sender. That was a high, in case you didn't know. Um, here's my name is Rex, so it's um, R E X. Uh, codes right there, and it's a fun kit. That is it. There you go. Uh, if you uh, get one of these, I hope you have fun building it and even more fun sending code at night. Thank you. Bye.